Hello and welcome back uh, to this uh, series of videos that we're making uh, for the constructors group. Um, this video is about power supplies, uh, a basic introduction, uh, just give you a brief um, overview of you know what power supplies are all about and uh, how you can use them. Um, there's different types of power supply. Um, you've got basically two different types. You've got a one which is called a linear supply and another which is called a switch mode supply or, or switching supply and they're both completely different the way that they're actually made inside, the way they're constructed but uh, at the end of the day they both do the same overall function of converting uh, input power to an output power um, whether that's current conversion or voltage conversion. Usually when we talk about power supplies uh, in home construction, we're talking about voltage conversion. We're really talking about something that usually plugs into the mains, 240 volts AC, and that um, gets converted to an output voltage, uh, typically five volts or 12 volts, you know, something like that for pieces of equipment that you might want to plug it into. Um, for example, here's a, here's a phone charger. I think we've all got one of these lying around somewhere in the house. And, um, you know, you've got your three pin, 240 volt input there, across the live and the neutral. And uh, some have an earth, some don't have an earth. This one doesn't have an earth, that's just a plastic stub. So it can go into the socket. Um, so really you're just dealing with live and neutral. And on the end of it, you've got a USB plug which uh, you can use it to charge your phone with or you can uh, obviously do other things with them like uh, plug them into small development boards uh, or even use them in your own projects if you've got a socket to plug that into it'll give you five volts so that's a that's a switch mode supply inside of there and I'll explain a little bit about the difference between linear and switch mode in a moment but uh, that's how they can make them so small and very efficient as well they hardly use up any power at all uh, when they're in standby uh, and they don't really warm up very much they generate a little bit of heat but it's not uh, it's not much so that's a a, a very common uh, like you see i think we've all got these lying around haven't we uh, for our phones and stuff so uh, yeah you see those a lot and that's a switch mode supply so then you've got other types of supplies um more for construction home use uh, and that's really what I wanted to uh, concentrate more on because we're a constructors group and this is the sort of thing we're likely to come across. Um, well, here's a supply here. I'll just um, get, the, get into the shot a bit better. Um, this is a bench supply, linear type. And um, this one is fairly large. Um, if you're into radio use at home, if you're a radio ham, I know a lot of us on the group are radio hams, you probably came across these quite a lot. Uh, this particular one is the EP925, and they're very common uh, for radio use. And the reason why they're common is because uh, they're a good price for what they do, and it'll deliver up to 30 amps. That's quite a high current, um, and for radios that, that generate up to 100 watts, then you know you tend to need about 20 amps at least sometimes 25 in that region and this will sort of supply that kind of current nicely but um, that's why it's big it's very heavy <laughs> you wouldn't want to drop it on your toe um, it's uh, it's a linear supply which means it's got a big transformer there's lots of copper inside of there and the transformer and if you can see it or not I uh, know you can't really make that out, but there's a big huge transformer in there and that's quite a few kilos heavy as well. Um, linear supply does warm up, has a, it's got a fan inside to keep it cool. Uh, the fan's at the back there and it switches on and off to regulate the temperature. Uh, so that's common in radio shacks. The, uh, here's another one, here's another bench supply. And that is uh, this one here, this is a topwood. Uh, electric instruments uh, power supply these are quite common as well you know, on bench equipment for bench equipment I should say and the, the idea of this is you look at it and you think well that's a lot of knobs and buttons and stuff what's going on there well really it's just two power supplies in one box 
So you've got a power supply on the left and you've got a power supply on the right. And it's basically two supplies in the same case. And you can do things like adjust the, uh, adjust the, uh, the voltage, the output voltage of the supply. And you can also limit the current as well, which is very handy indeed. Um, and you've got the same on this side. This particular supply will go up to 30 volts and it'll supply three amps per channel. And the reason why you have dual supplies like this and not just a single one uh, is because a lot of times when you're building, constructing audio circuits in particular, it's not just limited to audio circuits, but that's a very typical uh, purpose for one of these. You need a positive and a negative power supply. So you need a plus rail, as we call it, and a minus rail um, supply. Typically something like plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. So you really need two supplies. So what this particular s supply allows you to do is to go between an independent separate power supply where you can have this one at this voltage and you can have that one at that voltage. Do what you like with it. You can also flick it over to the tracking mode. And in the tracking mode, when you adjust one, it adjusts both at the same time. That's very nice, so you can have plus 12, minus 12, or plus 15, minus 15, that sort of thing. And you only have to adjust it on one control. Saves trying to balance it out all the time. So that's a handy feature, and that's a dual tracking power supply. Again, this is a linear supply, this particular model, and it's very heavy. <laughs> nice big transformer inside. Um, okay, that's that one. Then you've got another one up here, which I can, I hope you can see that. This is a a single supply adjustable from 0 to 20 volts and that'll that's got a knob on the front there you're going to adjust it to I've got that set to 12 volts at the moment uh, on there it's also got a current display as well showing uh, a current in amps and this this particular one goes up to two amps which is kind of handy for just testing doing quick tests on the bench and that sort of thing so pretty much all these supplies are doing a, roughly the same job you know, either it's a single supply or it's a dual supply or it's a, you know, it's a nice big chunky heavy duty supply up to 30 amps. And of course you can get power supplies that go higher than that, but they just get a bit ridiculous and uh, <laughs> they get a bit heavy. Now, I'll just sort of show you what's going on here. If I can briefly go through this, I'll get my paper out. So anyway hope you can see that all right anyway I'll try and get this in shot as best as I can all technology pencil and paper here um, so power supplies well as I said at the beginning you're really looking at voltage conversion most of the time for um, there are other types of supply but this is just a basic overview and um, the most uh, the, all these supplies that I've shown you here they all take 240 volts in so, you know, 240 volts coming in to two terminals. I hope you can actually see that. Probably not. Um, I'll show you clearer in a moment. And uh, you have like a live and you have a neutral connection. And that's basically the main domestic supply coming in. And what's really happening is you have a transformer, which is basically a copper coil on an iron former uh, wrapped around and on the other side of the transformer you have another coil and that does the actual conversion or transformation if you like of voltage and current from the from the primary to the secondary coil so that's actually called a primary uh, coil that's called a secondary coil so you've got mains coming in you would always have a fuse in there, by the way, for safety purposes. And uh, don't forget, we're dealing, we're talking over 50 volts. So you have, if you ever build anything like this or do any work with mains like this, you must be very careful what you're doing and be aware that you're operating over 50 volts. So there's a big disclaimer there. Okay, be careful what you're doing if you ever build anything like this. So coming in, 240, that then gets converted. So the ratio of the transformer it has a conversion ratio or voltage ratio and then you get a secondary output voltage which could typically be something like uh, just as an example 15 let's say 15 volts okay that could be actually uh, anything really coming out 
uh, depending on the, the turns ratio of the transformer. So that transformer is really the heart of the power supply. Um, after the transformer, you're looking at what we call um, a rectifier circuit. And there's different types of rectifier circuit, but the simplest type of rectifier circuit is a simple diode. And that will take the AC signal and convert it to a, if that's zero, it converts it to a DC signal. So if that's, if that's zero and that's zero, you can see, hopefully, <laughs> I hope you can see that, uh, yeah, that it's actually going negative and positive. Um, that's AC, negative and positive, whereas the output of the diode is giving you positive pulses. It takes, the, it takes the positive cycle, it only lets through the positive half and it blocks the negative half. Let's through the positive half, blocks the negative half. So that's rectification, it's converting basically AC to DC. And that's single rectification, single diode rectification, that's the simplest that you can actually get. You can get a, a bridge rectifier which has four diodes in it and that does the, the same job but it's just more efficient. After that you're looking at a capacitor um, and that capacitor there is what we would call a smoothing capacitor. It then takes these, these if you like positive humps and smooths it out so then after that it looks like if that's your zero point you're kind of getting a, a, a ramp like that so at that point can you see that i hope so i hope you can see that so at that point you're actually getting everything above zero nothing's going down to zero anymore and you're getting more of a dc waveform and this little bit at the top is what we refer to as the ripple. So you get a certain amount of ripple. and But basically it is a DC signal at that point. You are actually, you could plug that into a, um, a motor. Um, you know. Um, or a small circuit of some sort. Uh, like a digital circuit or something like that. And uh, you know, you, you do actually have a DC signal. It's not a very clean signal. You'd probably have to regulate it after that, but I'm not going to go that far here. I'm just giving you a brief overview of the, you know, the components of the actual power supply itself. So we've come from 240 volts coming in, you know, from the mains. It's been transformed through the transformer, and it gets rectified with a diode or bridge rectifier, which has got four in. Same job. Um, smoothing capacitor um, to take the humps out. And then we end up with something DC with a bit of ripple on the top. <laughs> and that's basically a very simple, about as simple as you can get power supply uh, that you could use to drive a motor or something very basic like that. Make it spin. A DC motor, you know. Um, now this is what we'll refer to as a linear supply. Uh, linear because uh, it's analog. There's no switching or anything going on. Um, we're using coils and, you know, uh, we're rectifying straight from the secondary of the transformer. There's nothing special going on. Switch mode power supplies are different, whereas you have the the mains coming in. You've got your live and neutral again, 240 volts, 235 is it actually, I think it's what it is these days. And you actually rectify the mains directly. Yeah, so. The mains comes in, again with the fuse in line, which I haven't shown here. And that is rectified directly from the mains. Now, you might think, well, that sounds a bit dangerous. And yes, it is. <laughs> and that's why if you're working with switch mode power supplies, you have to be extremely careful not to touch certain parts of the supply because you will get an electric shock. Um, so half of the supply inside of the, um, the unit itself is live so you have to be very careful with switch mode power supplies the linear supply has an isolation barrier between the two coils um, so there's no electrical connection between them you're fully isolated here you can touch this with your hands no problem at all can't touch that bit but you can touch this bit and on this side you can't touch any of it 
because <laughs> it's all live. You know, that is actually connected to that through a diode. So uh, I just thought I'd point that out from a safety point of view. If you're working on switch mode supplies, you better be careful. Um, after the diode, it's then, again, that could be a bridge rectifier diode, just a high voltage one. You have another capacitor, and this typically is a high voltage capacitor in the region of around about 400 volts. It's usually about a 400, you know, 385, 400, sometimes 450 volt capacitor because it has to be able to take the, the rectified mains voltage, which is higher than the AC voltage. It actually goes higher than that. It's just the way it works. So at that point, you've got around about 365, uh, up to 400 volts, depending on your mains. And this voltage is, you might recognize the circuit from the linear supply. It's very similar to this circuit. So it, we're getting the same waveforms, essentially, except now there's no transformer it's straight from the mains. So we've actually done away with the transformer. That makes the unit much lighter. Uh, it uh, you know makes it more efficient. You don't have any losses in the transformer, anything like that. So there you go. So the output of that, okay, can then be switched through an elect electronic switching device. And there's different ways to switch this. I'm just gonna show this simplistically as blocks. It could be a MOSFET, it could be a bipolar transistor or whatever. There's different ways to do this and what they call different topologies, which is different methods of actually making switch mode supplies. But essentially, this is what they're doing. So you're taking um, rectified mains, smoothed mains, that goes through a switching device, which then does switch a transformer. Um, yeah, I haven't actually shown that plus, never mind. It's something like that anyway. So you've got a switch which operates the primary of the coil of the... Uh, of a switching transformer and then you've got the output of the uh, the switching transformer which again is rectified and smoothed okay so that's and then that's that's your output there so and you might think well so what's all this about why are we actually why are we actually um that's neg that's, that's zero sorry about that that's actually connected to there there you go that's better. So this this switch is basically turning on and off the current through the primary of the switching transformer. The difference is the linear supply works at a 50 hertz in the UK. If you're in America, it's 60 hertz. But in the UK, um, it's it's a 50 hertz, if you like, cycle from the mains. So it's quite low frequency, which makes the transformer huge in order for the transformer to actually work to get the transformation from the primary to secondary are you following this <laughs> so because it's a low frequency because of the way coils work it actually needs a lot of copper and a lot of iron which makes it heavy copper and iron are both heavy so as you know so with a switch mode supply what it means is we can make this switching frequency any frequency we like pretty much and typically, switch mode power supplies that you find today are running around about 50 kilohertz. As opposed to 50 hertz for the linear supply. 50 hertz for the linear from the mains. 50 kilohertz, and of course that could be a different frequency. It could be 40 kilohertz, it could be 80 kilohertz. And I mean, there's quite a wide variation. But generally speaking, they're around, you know, the plus or minus of around about 50. Now the advantage with that is switching all this very high current here, smooth DC, at 50 kilohertz. It means this transformer can be much smaller than that transformer. That's generally, that's the trick. That's really what switch mode power supplies are all about. Making them small, making them light and more efficient so you get less heat. So a linear supply, you need a big transformer, heavy. A switching supply, you can have the transformer much smaller and much lighter, less copper, less iron, because you're switching it at a higher frequency. And that's pretty much it. So, and the isolation in the switch mode supply takes part, takes place rather, in the, the small uh, transformer here. That's again rectified and smoothed, and that's your output voltage, which then goes to your regulation. 
It's a little bit more complicated than that. You do have a feedback loop which all, which corrects the uh, the switch, uh, and it keeps everything constant. It's a, it's a constant circuit, like a, a negative feedback loop, which actually keeps the switch at the correct uh, pulse width modulation. If you like to keep the output voltage regulated, so there's an extra tick, an extra sort of part of explanation required there. But I'm just showing you the difference between the two supplies without going too far into it. So I hope you can appreciate that's why. Linear supplies have big transformers generally, especially high current ones. Uh, and switch mode supplies can be very small, they can be tiny, you know, they can be uh, inside of a they can be inside of a wall plug, and that will give you up to five amps that thing by the way. I think it's rated at about five amps, so it's quite a high current, you know. Just want to do a little uh, little test. Um, nothing complicated. I've got the um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the dual tracking power supply on at the moment. I've just got it in uh, single independent mode, so we're just using the left hand side, not using the right hand side for anything at all. And I've got it set to about 12, 13 volts on the voltmeter. <coughs> Excuse me. I've also got the, uh, the current control here limited to about 500 milliamps max. So it, it, it won't deliver any more than 500 milliamps if it tries to it'll actually shut the supply down which is a great safety feature if you're playing around on the bench with little circuits like this with you know bare crocodile clips and that sort of thing because uh, they can flop around and short out and stuff it's always a good idea to have the uh, the power supply current uh, limited uh, so you don't get like a big spark or blow fuse or anything like that um, so yeah, let's just measure the output of the power supply first of all. I've got it through a couple of crocodile leads here. That's these cables coming through here. I'll get rid of those. So you see, coming through here. And all I'm going to do is just quite simply measure on the meter here, voltage meter, uh, the, uh, the supply output. So there you go, I've just got the probes on. And it's reading 13.825 volts uh, at the moment. Now, I can... If I can put that on there, you'll see I can adjust the voltage, turn the voltage down. Uh, there's about, there's about, uh, that's 10.3. So all we're doing is just, you know, adjusting the uh, the voltage here. Uh, take it down to about 5, that's 5.078 or something like that. It's moving around a little bit, which is common. So, uh, yeah, so I hope you just get a feel for that. If you if you haven't used a bench power supply before, there's fit there's 15 volts. You know, if you're not familiar with this kind of thing, that's basically what these controls are doing. You're just turning the voltage up and down. Uh, nothing complicated. They'll set it to about 12 and a half volts. That's tw that's 12.4. And what I was saying about the um, the current limiting, um, that's this meter here and this control here. Now. If my, um, this is my power supply here, and if these were to just fall around and short out, if you can keep an eye on that meter there, if you can see it, hang on, this, uh, this meter here, when I short these out, you see that? It's not doing any harm at all, and this, uh, this light's coming on to say that it's actually current, uh, constant current mode, which means it's basically pulling the current back it's limiting the current to about half an amp. I've got that set to about half an amp. You can turn it up or down. And you'll notice also that the volt meter is dropping down to zero when I'm shorting this out. That's short, that's open. That's short, that's open. So yeah, I hope you can appreciate that's a good safety feature um, if you want to use the, uh, the current control as a safety feature. It's there to do so if you wish. Okay. Uh, I tend to keep them limited to like half an amp, like 500 milliamps or 200 milliamps, depending on what I'm working on. And just to show you the result of all that, I've got a little, I've got a little mini bulb, like a P bulb, sort of thing you would find in a panel display, a panel meter. And we'll just put some voltage on there and make it light up. There you go. So that's just lighting up the, lighting up the bulb there. That's all it's doing. And what you can do is. Um, with that, you can turn the voltage down. You'll see it go dim, like a brightness control. Really, you can turn it back up. Don't want to go too high because I'll blow it up. <laughs> Twenty twelve volt bulb, and then you can dim it. So it's, you know, all I'm doing is adjusting the voltage on the supply. 
take that back up again to about 12 volts that's where it should be at its normal at its normal operating brightness so by adjusting the voltage on the supply we're basically um you know varying the brightness of the bulb simple as that really okay just wanted to show you that and that's the sort of thing you can do with variable power supplies um the other way to do, i suppose the other thing worth looking at is the is the current side of power supplies and for that we need to put the meter in a different mode we need to put it into current mode and change the probe over to the current input probe right now at this point the meter will display current in amps and I need to put this on to let's say the 2 amp range and um, so what we can do there is uh, again connect it to the power supply now you would never normally do this without limiting I'm going to take the limiter right down to zero you see that light come on there because the meter at this point is actually a short circuit across the terminals we're going to measure current so you would never you would never stick a, a, um, a current meter straight across an output of a power supply unless it's limited which is exactly what we're doing here just so you know that so let's put that on. I know I've done that, and the meter's reading like zero ish. I think I need to recalibrate my meter. Either that or the battery's starting to go. Let's turn up the current. There you go. I'm overloading straight away, so let's turn that down. 22, uh, 234.9 milliamps. So there's like 200, 234.8 milliamps. I'm turning up the current. Let's try, it's in for half an amp. Let's try and get to half an amp. Uh, a little bit more, yeah, that'll do. 503 milliamps. Um, 503.3.4 milliamps. That's about half an amp there. So right now through the cables, uh, through, you know, from the supply straight in, we're taking half an amp uh, from, the, um, from the power supply and that's actually Pretty much correct if you look at the display here that's showing half an amp on there as well so we're taking 500 milliamps constant current from the supply and the voltage doesn't really make any difference except when you get right down the bottom then it'll switch off so this what I'm trying to explain here is that there's two different ways to use supplies so you can use it as a, a constant voltage generator or you can use it as a constant current generator and the two are very different uh, different two different modes I'm turning the current up and down now. I'll take it up to one amp. Uh, uh, something like that. We're about there. That's uh, just over one amp. That's 1008 milliamps. 1008 milliamps. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just it's just over an amp. Barely over an amp there. So at the moment, and the meter here shows one amp as well. So they, they tie up, which is good to see. So at the moment, through the cables, we're taking exactly, well, when I say exact, plus or minus very little, and we're doing one amp uh, constant current from the supply. And if I leave this long enough, you might actually, you might actually start to feel a little bit of heat, a little bit. It's not really that much current yet, but you know, it is actually using up power um, right now. Uh, there's nothing there. It's not really warm enough. Uh, one amp is actually not a lot of current. If it was uh, five or ten amps, you'd probably start to feel things warm up a little bit. We're not quite. We're not quite uh, taking enough yet. But I hope that demonstrates the constant current output of the uh, of the uh, of the power supply, uh, as opposed to the constant voltage. Right. So let's take that off. Disconnect everything and whenever you've done a current measurement uh, with your meter always remember to put it back to voltage so otherwise you could end up with a dead short next time you dig a, make a, uh, a voltage measurement so make sure the meter is back into voltage mode put the probe back into the, uh, the voltage input not the current input and take the mode if you have a mode take it out sometimes it's a rotary dial switch or something make sure you always put it back to voltage so you don't forget for the next time you come to use your meter yes i have been caught out myself <laughs> it does happen so you have to be careful and try to remember that all right
and that's basically the operation of the supply um, so we've demonstrated voltage output uh, and we've de demonstrated uh, constant current output I hope that gives you um, a bit of an overview of the you know power supplies on the bench and um, you get an appreciation between the difference between uh, switch mode power supplies and linear supplies switch mode power supplies uh, you see them a lot these days simply because they're, they're cheap to manufacture and you know they're very efficient they don't really warm up very much at all and they're very light and you can make them very small compared to linear supplies um, but, a, but a switch mode power supply isn't always the correct choice depending on what it is you want to drive uh, for instance with radio equipment you can have problems with switch mode power supplies because if you remember on the circuit I'll briefly mention this without going too deep if you remember on the switch mode supply we actually have a high frequency switch round about 50 kilohertz now that switch is a square wave switch it's on it's off it's not like in the middle it's not like sine wave where it slowly goes up and slowly goes down this is really rapid on then off then on and off to produce a square wave and the problem with that is it produces a lot of RF radiation you have a wide frequency spectrum from the switch mode supply and if you're operating radio equipment well a lot of the times you hear that interference you hear that uh, RF radiation uh, if the supply isn't designed well enough and it has lots of input filtering and output filtering and it's in a metal box and it's screened and all that kind of thing uh, cheaper supplies that you get from China them sort of places they tend not to have very good filtering at all so when you connect something like that to a radio it can actually hear as interference as a buzzing sound or hissing sound uh, the uh, the clock the uh, the switch of the uh, you know to the primary of the, uh, the transformer if you use a linear supply <clears throat> yes it's big and heavy um, but it's clean you don't get any switching high frequency switching so from a radio point of view that's why a lot of hams prefer, tend to go for linear supplies as opposed to switch mode supplies not always you can you know some guys go for the switch modes as well the cheaper um, the lighter the smaller and if it's designed well enough if it's a professional design from a reputable manufacturer the chances are you can even get away with it and it doesn't affect your receive uh, in noise levels at all uh, but sometimes it does and a lot of hams tend to go for linear I know I do I tend to stick with linear um, for radio use but that's another video okay well I hope you've uh, got a bit of an appreciation for the the differences between power supplies and um, between switching and linear and you've got a bit of a feel for how to adjust them uh, what what they even look like what sort of metering you have the fact this one's got dual sometimes you can have dual sometimes it's single things like that so uh, okay well thanks for watching and I hope it's been uh, useful